Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator Flight School. In today's video we're going to carry out basic manoeuvring in the aircraft. We'll look at straight and level flight, climbing and descending and then 10 degree, 30 degree and 60 degree angle bank turns. We'll also briefly cover the stall towards the end of the lesson. I do hope that you find the video useful, if you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, please leave them down in the comment section below. But now let's jump into the cockpit of the Cessna 152 and begin the lesson. So here we are back in the cockpit of the Cessna 152. If you remember from the last lesson we'd just taken off out of Bears Airport and we're now at 3000 feet maintaining straight and level. The first thing we'll cover in the lesson is straight and level flight. We touched on it briefly in the last lesson, but we'll uh, go through everything again now. So as I say, we are now in straight and level flight. You can see that according to the uh, vertical speed indicator, we're not really climbing or descending. We're maintaining 3,000 feet and we're currently doing about 95 knots. The engine RPM is 2200 RPM, that's our cruise setting. And my hands are off the controls currently, we're using the elevator trim to maintain the aircraft's pitch and the aircraft will keep pretty much straight and level on its own. A really important thing to get used to in the simulator is using visual cues outside of the aircraft to assess the aircraft's attitude. Try not to get too fixated on the instruments, it's a bad habit to form early on in your uh, flying training and it's very easy to do so in the uh, simulator in particular. So as you can see right now the horizon is roughly equidistant between the combing of the uh, aircraft and the aircraft's compass. So that's a reasonable guide as to how the picture should look out the window at a straight and level attitude. And you have to find what works for you in terms of the viewing position that you have within the simulator. Anyway, we'll put the aircraft out of straight and level flight now and then we'll recover to straight and level flight just so that we can discuss once again the actions required. So we'll pitch the nose up, we'll put in uh, quite a lot of aft elevator trim there. And you can see that the aircraft is uh, now well and truly out of straight and level flight. We want to recover, so we'll very slowly and smoothly on the controls. Again, you can see just how little elevator input I'm actually using. We'll get back up to 3000 feet and then we'll pitch. Initially just using yoke inputs to pitch the aircraft. So they're straight and level. Looking out the window we can see we are straight and level. And I can feel that the aircraft just needs a little bit of forward elevator trim. Once again, use course trim to get the aircraft roughly where you want it and then you can just use blips of uh, up or down elevator trim to finesse the control inputs until you no longer need your hands on the controls. So again I have my hands off the controls right now, you can see that the aircraft is fairly nicely trimmed out for level flight. We're maintaining our uh, vertical speed at zero and an altitude of 3000 feet. So we've just come back onto a reciprocal heading, heading back towards uh, Bears Airport. Reciprocal heading just means we made a turn of 180 degrees. As you can see we're still maintaining uh, an altitude of 3000 feet and straight and level flight. The first thing we'll look at is some uh, descent manoeuvres in the aircraft. Descending is pretty straightforward in the Cessna 152. All we need to do to descend is to reduce the aircraft's engine power. Instinctively you might think that if we reduce the engine power we'll see the aircraft's airspeed reduce, however that's not actually the case. As we mentioned previously we've actually trimmed the aircraft out to maintain a speed of around 90 knots. So if we reduce the engine power what we'll actually see is that the aircraft will pitch the nose down in order to maintain our trimmed speed of 90 knots. So we'll have a look at that now. Keep an eye on the airspeed initially, we'll bring the engine power back. As you can see we're maintaining our speed. The vertical speed is steadily increasing into a descent. The aircraft is descending and we are maintaining a speed of 90 knots. 
You'll see that the aircraft won't fly exactly 90 knots, it will uh, pitch up and down slightly around that particular speed, but more or less we'll maintain 90 knots. And with this engine power setting we'd now continue a descent at 1,000 feet a minute, essentially. If we want to stop the descent there's two ways of doing that. We could either pull back on the elevator, as you can see that brings us back to level flight. However you'll also notice that the aircraft's airspeed will start to reduce and ultimately if we maintain this particular power and attitude the speed would reduce until we stalled the aircraft. We'll talk more about stalls later on but certainly it's an undesirable state to uh, put the aircraft in. The proper way to recover your descent is not to just pull back on the elevator. All we need to do is just start increasing that engine power again and as we discussed in previous lessons, we'll essentially use the engine power to control the aircraft's rate of climb or descent and using pitch to control our airspeed. Once again, it's a very important thing to remember. It will become particularly useful later on during the landing lesson. So we'll come back up to 2200 RPM, which was our cruise power setting. And you can see the aircraft will pitch up once again maintaining 90 knots, more or less. And you might see, as we do here, a slight climb. However, it will eventually settle down at 90 knots, straight and level flight, at a power setting of 2200 RPM. So next we'll look at a uh, climb. Again, pretty straightforward in the Cessna 152. All we need to do if we want to climb is just increase the engine power and conversely to the descent you'll see that the aircraft will now pitch the nose up and try and maintain our speed of 90 knots and we'll now climb at an airspeed of 90 knots. The only slight difference with the climb, what we currently have is what's known as a cruise climb so we are climbing However, we're not climbing at the optimum rate. If we want to climb the Cessna 152 at a uh, more optimal rate of climb, and then we need to pitch the aircraft for around 70 knots. So we'll pull back on the elevator now, pitch the aircraft up to 70 knots. Again, important to look outside the aircraft and get a good visual cue of what the 70 knot pitch rate looks like. It'll look very much like the same pitch that we had on the takeoff. So the horizon just coming through the top of the combing there. Now it's 70 knots and again we'll use elevator trim to uh, reduce our pressure on the control column and we'll trim the aircraft for 70 knots. And as you can see the aircraft is now climbing quite nicely at around 700 feet a minute and we'll continue to do so until we uh, make a change to the power setting or the aircraft pitch. So we'll climb to 3500 feet and we'll carry out one more level off manoeuvre and then we'll look at some turning manoeuvres. Again, if we want to level off the aircraft, we just need to anticipate slightly our level off manoeuvre. So we'll now pitch the nose down. Unlike with the descent, we don't want to just come straight back on the aircraft's power as we were uh, trimmed for 70 knots. We want to pitch down, putting some nose down into the uh, aircraft's control column allowing the aircraft to accelerate up to 90 knots. Once we're at 90 knots we can come back on the engine power, come back to 2200 RPM once again, and then using trim once again to reduce the uh, forces on the yoke. So that broadly covers uh, climbing and descending in the aircraft. Once again a very good idea to uh, go out and practice some manoeuvres yourself and I can't emphasize enough, try and do as much of it as possible looking out the aircraft window and then just gazing at the instruments briefly every now and again. 
to check that you actually are controlling the aircraft in the desired way. Ok now we'll look at some turns in the aircraft. So we'll first look at 10 degree angle bank turns, then 30 degree and then finally what's known as a steep turn or a 60 degree angle bank. If you're flying the aircraft and you only want to make very small course corrections then you only really need a very small angle of bank. So for example right now if we just wanted to come right 10 degrees what we need to do is put in a very small amount of right aileron again looking at the controls you can see just how minor that input was. You can see we're now maintaining 10 degrees angle of bank and you can see that the ball on the turn slip indicator is ever so slightly out to the right so we can just squeeze the right rudder and that will centre the uh, ball on the turn slip indicator. So we're now banking nicely and we've now coordinated the turn nicely. You'll see that the aircraft has a slight tendency there to uh, pitch nose down. You can see that we are in about a 100 foot per minute descent rate. To correct that we need to ever so slightly pull back on the elevator to allow the aircraft to maintain level flight. It's less easy to see right now but it will become much clearer later on that as we increase the angle of bank we'll need to increase first the amount of rudder and secondly the elevator input. To level off the aircraft once again we basically just reverse the control inputs that we've just made. So we roll the aircraft back to the left there's level flight, we can reduce the rudder input and we can reduce the amount of uh, elevator input that we need on the yoke. So we'll now carry out a 30 degree angle bank turn to the right. 30 degrees angle bank is what you'll most commonly want to use when turning the aircraft unless as I say you're just making a uh, minor correction to the flight path. So once again, looking outside, checking that the direction of turn is clear. We'll momentarily look at the controls just so you can see my control inputs and then we'll look outside visually for the uh, attitude reference and picture outside. So turning to the right we make a small right input on the ailerons. This time you'll need to make a slightly larger input on the elevator to maintain level flight and squeezing right rudder once again to keep the ball in the centre of the turn and slip indicator. Ideally you actually want to make the rudder input at the same time you make the aileron input and it really is just a case of squeezing the rudder to coordinate the turn. So you can see now we're maintaining 30 degrees angle of bank and we're maintaining level of flight in terms of our altitude. Looking out the window you can see that once again the visual picture is somewhat similar. However we now have more bank angle. The aircraft's nose cowling just intersecting below the horizon. And again important to get an idea of the visual picture that you're looking for in order to maintain a particular manoeuvre. Again the aircraft will quite happily maintain this manoeuvre all day long until you make a change on your control inputs. So we'll come back to straight and level once again, easing off on the rudder, putting in some left aileron input and the aircraft will return very nicely to straight and level. We'll now look at a uh, 60 degree angle of bank or what is otherwise known as a steep turn. This manoeuvre is a little bit more complex You'll see that as we increase the aircraft's angle of bank, maintaining a level altitude will become uh, somewhat harder. And you'll also see that there's a tendency for the aircraft's speed to reduce. So we'll actually need to input a little bit more engine power as we make the turn. However, the basic premise is much the same, so we'll look out to the front, check that the uh, direction of turn is clear, we'll put in some left aileron, to uh, begin the turn. As we increase our angle of bank we we'll need to steadily increase the amount of elevator required. And 60 degree angle of bank is that final white marker on the aircraft's attitude indicator. You'll see that the speed will want to reduce so we'll now put in some more engine power. And you'll see the aircraft's nose really wanting to drop now. 
So we have to put in a lot more elevator to maintain our same altitude. You can see the picture out the front is very different now. The horizon intersecting basically uh, right at the bottom of the engine cowling. And when you fly the manoeuvre yourself you'll feel it's much harder to actually maintain a uh, level altitude and 60 degree angle of bank. It's actually somewhat easier in the sim to perform a steep turn than it is in the real aircraft. But as you can see once again with the increased engine power, the aircraft quite happy to maintain this manoeuvre all day long. Again to uh, come out of the manoeuvre we just ease off on the uh, elevator forces, right aileron input and the aircraft will come back once again to straight and level. Don't forget however to ease off the engine power or of course the aircraft will uh, want to begin a climb. So we've had a look at uh, straight and level flight, climbing, descending and some turning manoeuvres. Just to round off the lesson we'll briefly discuss the stall. This isn't designed to be a lesson on stalling per se, we're just going to look at the manoeuvre so that if you do inadvertently stall the aircraft you'll know how to recover. You might have heard the term stall and of course intuitively you'd probably think of stalling your engine in your car, however a stall in an aircraft is uh, very different in fact. Essentially a stall in your aircraft is where the airflow going over the wings of the aircraft is no longer sufficient to maintain uh, lift. This can be for various aerodynamic reasons, however to simplify things uh, considerably for the sake of this uh, introductory tutorial series, the most likely time you'll find that you've stalled the aircraft is when you've allowed the aircraft's airspeed to get too low and there's no longer enough airflow going over the wings to maintain the lift on the aircraft. As I say, the most likely reason you'll stall is the aircraft's airspeed will be too low. All you need to do to recover from the stall is pitch the nose down and then go full power on the engine and that will allow you to recover from a stall as quickly as possible. It doesn't matter how close to the ground you are, the best thing that you can do is to carry out this manoeuvre, even if you just pitch the nose down slightly, and then you'll find that the aircraft should recover, particularly in the Cessna 152's case, very quickly from the stalled state. So we'll carry out a stall now. All we'll do is come back on the engine power, we'll see the aircraft's airspeed reduce and then at some point we'll hear a high pitched tone. That is the Cessna 152's stall warner and that's indicating to us the aircraft is either about to stall or now in a stalled state. So we'll come back on the engine power, we'll maintain straight and level flight. Of course to do that we'll have to slowly increase the back pressure on the yoke and we'll see that the aircraft's airspeed is reducing. As soon as we hear the stall warner go off, we'll pitch the nose down and increase the engine power. So there's the stall warner. The Cessna 152 is designed to pitch nose down if we enter the stall, so that will help us recover anyway. However, we'll pitch the nose down. You can be a bit more aggressive on the controls here, and we'll go full power and you can see that the stall warning has stopped now and the aircraft's airspeed back up once again. We'll look at one more stall, so coming back on the power once again. We'll let the stall progress a little bit more this time. So airspeed coming back, stall warning going off, we'll keep the aft elevator control input in, the aircraft's nose should drop, it's not as pronounced in the sim as it is in the real world. Okay, the aircraft's nose isn't really going to drop, so we'll pitch down and we'll increase full power. Allow the aircraft's airspeed to build up, and then we can slowly bring the aircraft's nose back up. As I say, that's not really designed to be a lesson on stalling per se, but it should give you a better idea of how to actually recover from the stall, should you inadvertently enter one. As you can see, we're currently over Lake uh, Washitaw. So we'll just carry out one last manoeuvre for the lesson. 
carry out one more turn back towards the airport, purely looking outside the aircraft. Just to prove that we can carry out manoeuvres very nicely without any reference to the instruments. So there's 90 knots, we'll maintain 2,500 feet, we've got 2,200 rpm on the engine. We'll first get the aircraft trimmed for 2,500 feet. Looking outside we've got the horizon roughly midway between the engine cowling and the compass and looking at the altimeter you can see we are maintaining 2,500 feet. We'll now carry out a 30 degree bank turn back towards the airport to the right. So looking outside checking visually that our flight path is clear, rolling to the right 30 degrees angle of bank, putting in a small amount of rudder and a small amount of aft elevator, keeping the aircraft's nose just below the horizon, a few inches below the horizon, and you can see that we are maintaining our altitude and we're doing a nice bank turn. There's Bears Airport out in front of us. We'll now pause the lesson here and we'll come back in the next part of the series to carry out the landing. So there you go guys, that covers basic manoeuvring in the Cessna 152. In the next lesson we'll come back and we'll take a look at landing the aircraft. Once again I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. That really helps the channel to grow, I really appreciate the support. If you have any comments or questions for me, please leave them down in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, thanks very much and I'll see you all again soon.